What is up, everybody? Very, very happy Saturday. Should be a very, very exciting one. We have more Seaval action. The Seaval North Bracket. We are back in full swing for the semester. Jobut and Fundy here to take you guys through. We should be very excited for today. Yeah, it's a great one. Getting back to Seaval after a little bit of a break since that last, uh, I guess, season they had. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but coming into this one, Saints Varsity here in this round of 32. This is going to be 32 teams in this. This part of it is single Elim. Going to be coming up against Briar Cliff University today. And uh, should they take this win today, should Saints or Briarcliff, whoever the winner, get to move on to that Sunday spot, yeah. which is going to be another best of three, which will then qualify you to that top eight bracket, which is going to have a loser side as well. Yeah, so they're going to have that loser's bracket. You have the potential run to make it to that backside. And the Saints coming into this bracket, I believe they are one of the top three or four higher seeds. By mm -hmm. all the predictions, we've seen a lot of like the pickums that have been released like through a C Val Hub and a bunch of these other outlets. St. Clair and Northwood, two of those teams that are favored to get to that Fair. grand final or at least get to that top three or four so these this is the team very very high expectations they have there's a lot riding on this as well seaval is the premier you know the new yeah. league that's just came around last semester but it is a premier league everybody wants to win it out and they want to try to make it eventually to that la land i believe at the end of may and the beginning of june there as well yeah and it's, it's gonna be a big path or a long path yeah. to get there a journey one could say but you got to take it one step at a time you got to focus on tonight first and as we get into the game soon why don't you let us know about the maps a little bit here, yeah Jordan. we're gonna be running through ascent pearl and then icebox for the side ascent was picked up by briarcliff the mm -hmm. saints deciding to go over onto pearl and icebox going that to be that decider so honestly thank goodness bind is gone and done and <laughs> dusted now that map was getting very very boring to watch i think and very very boring to cast but we have a couple well, fresh faces now these saints we know they like to pick a little bit of these not out there maps pearl mm -hmm. is actually becoming a map that's been a favorite by a lot of teams there's a lot of teams have realized a lot of stuff you can do with fade asher there's a lot of certain lineups pearl it's a, it's honestly a fun and like there's so many different ways to play the map the amount of you can lurk on like the back site and just like so many times you watch teams like do full circles around the map yeah, trying honestly. to rotate back on the site and things like that but the saints right now they're going to be feeling comfortable on all three of these maps that starting five is going to be kai yusef four tapping m's and sushi going to be filling in today Played a lot of varsity last semester, but this team had some continuity at least. Yeah, and I'm looking at that ascent first map as well, and we're already up into agent select here. Can see these comps coming through. We're gonna see that very, very typical comp to come through for the Saints here on Ascent and pretty well, yeah, hundred percent mirror there from the side of Briarcliff. And we see this a lot with, with these teams. Yeah. I mean this map has just been figured out to this point yeah. where like you know this is the best comp the most switch up you're gonna get is maybe a different uh initiator i've seen a few teams run the fade but i think most teams are back to the sova now anyway yeah Sova, especially on ascent and i mean odin spam through a is always you know mm -hmm. a classic in valor yeah. a classic annoyance a classic strategy you always have to be wary of it at least to some degree there so those teams pretty much like you said this meta at least for ascent has pretty much been figured out this is pretty much that standard meta five you're going to see it 90 percent of the time maybe offense defense maybe a swap one or two agents here or there but other than that not really going to see too much variation but looks like the saints are going to be starting off on that defense we know their defense is very very strong on ascent and briarcliff with this being their map choice the saints did get first side pick and Seth on that KJ and all the rest of these guys getting ready to start off with pistol first round the Seavel gets underway yeah one thing I did notice is that that Sova from the side of Briarcliff opted for full utility this round you see him tossing that shock dart out mid not gonna land any damage but still has that intel and the drone is a big one Shock darts do a lot of damage yeah. on pistol round, especially because people aren't going to be armored up. But the drone is just such a good ability, and it's really what makes Sova that step up from a lot of the other intel-based agents in the game. Yeah, when the drone had to get, I think, two series of nerfs, you knew it was a little bit yeah, strong of a PC utility. Changes, nerfs, yeah, like... <laughs> exactly. Price changes, health duration. So you knew it was a little bit overtuned before, but yeah, that drone can provide so much value. Just land sharking over onto that A site, navigating the smoke. Golden is going to be the one to pick up that spike there. 50 seconds. This is usually when these rounds start to get pretty busy briarcliff they're gonna go for immediate swing over onto this a site gonna try to clear out hell there golden though gonna try to get this spike down it looks like it'll be a 5v5 retake on pistol yeah barely any damage done all game as well a few players a little bit below a hundred but not necessarily anything to be concerned about you see harry or hariri there under heaven He's going to just be playing with that Sheriff, maybe trying to find some wall banks through there, but oh. there's going to be the pop flash to come out, but Golden in the corner, he's good for one. 
Caillou's not able to make it through, but the shock dart is, and it finds Golden in the end. The Saints, three kills down on this retake. No one's to fall yet. Seth going to be that first oh. one, but T dumps here. Is dropping players like flies, but he's gonna fall to sushi in the end. First round of this C Val round of 32 gonna be picked up by the Saints. And I'll tell you what, it was close as nails. I was gonna say that red was flashing like a like an ambulance light there. Down to one second, a very very close pistol round. Not super often you see a 5v5 retake come down to the final second, but T dumps there and that killjoy in the backside used that nano swarm to buy himself that five ten seconds. Ends up finding the swing with that pistol too. So Killjoy, honestly, her ascent, pretty much her hometown offense or defense. Just so many setups with the turrets, with the nano swarms. Just such a strong agent on this map. Yeah, I mean, Killjoy on that defense cannot be beat, but... You know, you kind of turn into that defense on yeah, that post plant so, as yeah. well. <laughs> then you just have, you can have such crazy setups on this map, especially with the lockdown as well. You can have yeah. lockdown setups that force people into a specific corner and then just start tossing mollies in the corner. Yeah, the only problem is having those dual Sova. Sova is specifically there just to stop the yeah, lockdown. It's so basically, you trade out one ultimate for one. But yeah, mm -hmm. you want to try to make sure you get ahead of that ultimate economy, though, because when you find that lockdown and you know that Hunter's Fury is not going to come up, it's like, okay, we can actually use this and try to play off of it now for one of these rounds. Yeah, it's funny because you'll never see that Sova use that Hunter's Ever. Fury unless it's to counter that lockdown. And then it really just comes down to can you use the lockdown when the enemy Sova yeah. does not have that Hunter's Fury? Try to keep that Sova behind when it comes to alt economy. A very slow round from Briarcliff to start, but it looks like it's going to be another A hit. Flash comes through into tree. No one's going to be found just yet. Haribri has this dash pop, but he's going to fall from behind. Ems is oh, on that a great nade's angle huge. here. The nade is huge! 4k to come through. Four tapping, going to grab one of those as well, but a flawless second round. And I mean, that's what happens when you're on that full save, Briarcliff. you got to try and make the push, but somebody's gonna have the SMG. They're gonna have more utility than you. It's just how that bonus round shakes out. Now, Briarcliff gonna have rifles in hand, gonna see what they can cook up here now that they've got that prized weaponry in their hands. Yeah, time of death, about 25 seconds at the end of the round. Location <laughs> all in tree. I think all five members fell in tree there. I know it was honestly, it was a one-to-one -one copy paste push of that very first round. The same thing on pistol. I think they pushed with exactly 55 seconds back-to-back -back rounds. They decide, okay, this is maybe our set strategy we want to try to use. The Saints make a fantastic read, shut it down in its tracks, and now they're going to have a little bit of a better buy this time. All these Caillou's rifles stacked deep. up. Caillou, though, in the short corner, sprays is going to be all day long. Ghost the second. Going to pick up both kills. Two members of Briarcliff going to be down. Now Caillou going to try to swing for the third. And why not make it a th triple? He's taken out three of these members. Sushi, good for the fourth one there. Now all left onto one member. All onto T-Dumps. He's got a pretty decent angle in mid, but that info has been received. Now he's got to pack off here and wait for these headhunters. I talked about the weaponry advantage for Briarcliff here on this buy round, but I mean, who needs a rifle when you're two meters away with a Spectre and finding as much headshots as Caillou does. Three for him now. Sushi picked up the one mid as well. And T-Dumps has just been found out. Look at these two players waiting for him to make that swing. Caillou actually falls, though. Weapon to diff. some body shots as well. Has Sushi there. T-Dumps on his shot today in a 1v2, though, and pinched from both sides. Waiting for oh. the swing to happen. The trade comes through. Yeah, I mean, T-Dumps played that about as well as you could got it basically yeah. to a 1v1. The Saints, very lucky to get that last trade on. And if you're Briarcliff, that round is going to sting just a little bit. You full invested all those rifles. You really thought you were going to have the Saints. But Caillou, so many times on that A site, we see that short quarter get played either with a Judge, sometimes a Shorty, SMGs very often. The Stinger, although the Stinger, I do believe, just got its price increased, and I think it... It got increased to 1100, and I think there was a, a slight nerf in the, either the damage or the recoil or something. So I don't yeah. think it's in the ground yet, but we're probably going to see a lot more specters. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think Riot knows what to do with the stinger. It's still at this good, point. but like, it's not, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still good. Not to its former glory, as one yeah. could say, but I think a big one from the end of that round was just. T dumps being able to take out three players, not letting them bring any of those rifles into the next round. Yeah. You only carry one over. It's at least going to hurt that economy a little bit more and make them rebuy up all those weapons. That's you're at least guaranteeing another 2,900 gone. But two players out in garage here. Some paw shots to come through from Caillou. He's trying to tap through that wall. He's very fond of those very shallow wall bangs there. Yeah, and Sushi's uh, holding that operator right down the middle of the map there, seeing if he can find anyone. 
to maybe cross over through that scope. Seth getting a little bit antsy in this garage, trying to shink straight up rather. Kai with a shot there, gonna get one. The spray is gonna be perfect. Seth, back to back headshots gonna be found. Four tapping, gonna add to the party. Now Hariri on this Marshall, trying to see what they can work up, but these Saints are starting to put the pressure on. Now, once they get that numbers advantage, you can see them start to try to garner this space toward the backside of the site. They're gonna be good for another one. Seth with a three piece on the round. Sim Smisek rather is actually gonna get that operator. <laughs> He's gonna chuck that thing off the map. So small victory for Briarcliff, but ultimately they're gonna end up dropping the round. Yeah, small, small victory is uh, a big one there. You can see the, the boys on stage round. Most likely gonna come through, but 4-0 right now, Jobin. It's uh, it's a tough one for Briarcliff to start off. I mean, especially having all of these rifles taken out of their hands every time you saw that Sova Smysek. He's literally being forced into trying to get rid of that operator. Just don't give it to the Saints, even though realistically, Sushi on that jet, probably gonna have an operator in a few rounds anyway. Yeah, honestly, the op, especially once you start to get that lead like the Saints have, you're gonna start to slowly build this economy, and that's why rounds like the second round, taking away all of Briarcliff's rifles, mm -hmm. you're basically hindering the economy for like two and a half, three rounds, depending on like, why they wanna go as far as buys are concerned. So getting those early rounds so, so nice, snowball off that pistol, off that bonus round. Now you can start to get a little bit comfortable, maybe start to take a few chances as well. You can take yeah. that rifle, maybe try to peek something mid, see if you can find a kill or two, and if you're Briarcliff right now, you gotta find some way to just dig in your feet and stop this momentum yeah and i think it's gonna come down to the start of those rounds those early picks especially in that garage area i'm looking at caillou and i'm looking at seth those yeah. picks in garage have been monumental you take out all the players on that b side of the map it lets your a players and your mid players kind of relax a little bit knowing they're only going to be facing two or three on those other defaults and then you can just follow up with as much as you want they've got so much intel they can grab you can even grab intel from the turret as well you see seth and i believe that's four tapping on the omen both got those ultimates available only one from briarcliff gonna be that lockdown as t dumps had that stellar round with the three kills wasn't able to pick it up, but it's going to help get the lockdown a little bit faster. There's the early pick from Seth. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's exactly what those Saints are looking for. Now you can start to walk down this mid and take those chances I was talking about. Caillou, he's going to get traded out with his one. So Spisek going to pick that one up. Sushi takes down Haribri in the process. Now playing this Cloudburst with <laughs> certainty. Four tapping, though. Going to end up winning out on that engagement. And all of a sudden, Golden looks around like, what happened, guys? Where'd my friends go? Stuck in this 4v1. All four of these members stacked up mid. The trade is going to be all day long. I believe Sushi or four tapping, picking up that last kill. That's going to be five in a row for the Saints to kick things off. Yeah, the one time Golden doesn't just get straight up pushed in Garage. The rest of his team falls mid cat there. And it's just going to be five rounds straight here for the Saints. The momentum keeping it going. And I mean... This is what we've seen from the rest of this season so far as well. This roster revamped, like, ready to really give serious, serious competition, trying to make this deep run in Seaval. That's what they're hoping for. They're looking for that LAN. Yeah, I know they had a very, very high finish last year. I believe it was either top six or top eight, but the expectations were to make it to that top three, that top four. This roster has been revamped, retooled, reimagined, remastered for this semester. They tried to get the best players they could with the best teamwork, the best continuity that they could get together as well. Sushi going to be good on that operator. Down goals Golden to kick things off. And once again, the Saints are going to have that 5v4 start. Briarcliff, you have the lockdown and the Hunter's Fury, but the Saints also having those two, they basically cancel out they do have that blade storm they're not gonna have to waste that this round though sushi he's got this operator here we're gonna try to clear pizza but m's gonna be lurking perfectly backside of market it's gonna find that one and now briarcliff into a 5v3 just under a minute yeah it looks like two players creeping up mid here t dumps falls to that wall band the leader of the killjoys here seems to be Seth, the winner of these duels to come through rezek and smissuk the only ones left here two initiators to try and make this happen that zero point's not gonna find anybody a headshot will find seth take him out of the round that's at least you're not worrying about a lockdown for the rest of this but look but again stuck in a 1v3 rezek tries to make that peak 
Can't find the one on his left. Caillou finishes that one off. Look at the boys on stage there. Coach Owen. Don't leave him hanging. Looking immaculate. Yeah, Coach Owen looking absolutely exquisite <laughs> as he gets the boys motivated from behind there. Nice little fist bump for Sushi. Sushi, say, hasn't been playing with the varsity team the last little while, but you can tell he's still got the same varsity skill. Just We've been flip-flopping this roster just a little bit, and as we go through C-Val, you know, it's good to have that eight, nine-man roster, especially the more maps and the more agents get added into this game. It's always nice to kind of have that trick up your sleeve or have a couple extra cards to play, especially especially if it comes down to certain series. But right now, the Saints, they look like they don't need that much extra help. Six, nothing to kick things off. And they pretty much every single round two, they've had four or five oh. alive in Sushi. You don't got to do it to them. An early op kill through the dark cover. And Briarcliff once again at a disadvantage. And KO being down early, not going to feel good either. Yeah, easy timing for Sushi on that one. I can, I can almost taste him just counting in his head. Yeah. One, two, three. All right, shoot. Yeah. And he finds that one. An easy first pick, and now you've got ultimate advantage. You've got everything you need to counter out that lockdown. T Dump's still in the game here, but it's gotta, it's gotta get come down to just a good execution. Briarcliff has yet to have a round where they can actually get onto that site. Oh, really. not again! Whew. Sushi whip Whew. on that like pixel peak there. Sova gonna make it across towards Cat and Briarcliff. Might want to peek through this dark cover. Two players playing actually main here. Ems and four tapping. Four tapping down wine. Ems ready to make this flash to come out. They're gonna blind that as well. Oh my Beautiful goodness. Beautiful pop flash. Not able to follow up Look for the two, but a ton of damage to come through. Four tapping here. He should be oh. able to find T dumps. What a flick from T dumps. Not even ready for that one. He finds that headshot. Hariri pops this blade storm too. They're gonna go in to this site. And this is what I was talking about. You need to get that execution down. But when the spike falls while planting, that hunter's fury comes through big from Caillou. Yeah, one HP over on the Sova. The plant's gonna get stopped. Actually, the plant does go down, but that's not gonna matter too much to the Saints. T dumps. He has the lockdown, but he's got no friends. Caillou's gonna take him down. The Saints are gonna be able to pick up this defuse. Three still alive. The operator still in the inventory seven rounds in a row to get things going here over on ascent uh, yeah the starting of that one looked promising for briarcliff but beautiful utility combo there from four tapping and ems just shuts down two players essentially in tree there yet four tapping through the paranoia to blind the drone or near sight the drone yep. i guess and then the pop flash comes through from ems the players that are trying to follow up on that drone no idea ems was even in that corner no to idea what's going with. on it was an easy follow-up for him just Barely missed that last shot on the second player, but the damage was all that needed to be done, realistically. Yeah, getting paranoid pop flash is basically somebody putting like a black bag on your head and just saying, go run around <laughs> yeah. and see if you don't run into a wall or something. It's essentially the same thing. You're just like, please go away and hopefully I don't die in the meantime. Briarcliff, early Hunter's Fury this time, gonna try to get that early frag. And this is one of the other times where the Hunter's Fury can be used well, although they are gonna pair that one with the lockdown as well. The Saints, they could counter with their own lockdown, knowing that the Hunter's Fury is down now as well. Gotta see what they want to decide to go with here. That lockdown looks like it's gonna go through. Seth gonna try to spray down into garage. No detains to be found. Briarcliff though, they are gonna gain control of sight. Four tapping slow boathouse though. He's gonna get taken out. So is Ems. Briarcliff, this is how you get on sight. This is how you execute. Things going much better this time around. Seth good for two on that site. Maybe if the res can come through, this could be super possible. Ems only got one more second left on that though. Now, Caillou in the 1v2. He's gonna get flashed up. He's able to find that one. Makes it a 1v1. Golden oh, Over tries to pick timing. up a gun. The timing oh. on that one. Caillou for three, eight, zero. Saints on fire. That hurts so bad. If you're Briarcliff, you executed so well that. on site. You did everything flawlessly the first half of that site take. You got the KO down. You did everything so well and coordinated. And it all comes crashing down at the hands of Seth and Caillou. I think Caillou for three, Seth for two on that round. They get things done there. And St. Clair, Briarcliff, you are so close to getting on the board. And that was a heavy investment from both sides as well. Yeah, a lot put into that. Especially like Briarcliff, that was their round to try and flip the momentum. And an insane clutch comes out in the end. And it's Seth and Caillou. That pair has just been able to shut down so many teams. Like you're often seeing that pair grab all five kills in yeah. the round, or maybe one or two go to the others, but it's just a great combo of players there and everyone there ready to support them. Oh, sushi.
This could be absolutely devastating for Briarcliff. I expect to see the Cloud Burst. Maybe they're waiting for that Dark Cover to come back online before they want to cross this doorway. There, the Pop Flash actually going to be inside the Dark Cover toward Heaven. And the Null Command is going to get popped for Briarcliff. So they want to try to take this A site now. They want to make sure they try to secure this round M's. Playing in that short corner near Tree. Red Light going to get tagged down. A couple shots go over toward Tree. Going to get some chip damage. The plant is going to come down now. And Briarcliff, once again, you've taken sight. You've gotten plant. Can you hold now? Sep's got that locked down. This could be a big retake to come through. It is going to get dropped. They know where one is. Sep is ready to drop on him. Oh. Finds one. Can he find the second? 30 health Beautiful. left. He's able to find it. Nobody going to get detained, it looks like, just yet. Both oh, players golden. playing under one. Jenny one under. Sep for three. Going to be hopped by four tapping. And it's a 4K for Sep. I mean... What else what can you, you say? Need to it's, say. Just, <laughs> it's just absolute domination from the Saints right now, and it's just textbook plays, really, and winning your gunfights. I mean, as much as Valorant is more of a utility-based game than a lot of other games we see here on stream, I mean, it all comes down to aim in the end. Yeah, bullets are, uh, in the end, the ultimate utility in every single one of these tax shooters. And the Saints right now putting more bullets in heads than Briarcliff. And even that's the tricky thing for Briarcliff. They've had two or three rounds where things actually look pretty good. And then things immediately go south. Like we said last time, it was Caillou and Seth for all five. Then Seth picks up four. And now the buy once again for Briarcliff. Pretty much going to be, you know, the value bin at Walmart. A couple of shares, maybe a Marshall, maybe an SMG Hariri, though. Going to take out Caillou nice and early. So that early aggression finally getting punished for the saints caillou getting marshaled in the head is the most I ironic like, <laughs> thing i've ever seen this guy's a huge Carbon fan justice. of the marshal himself <laughs> yeah i think every time we see caillou not have enough money for either like something like a guardian He'll or one of those money. higher tier it's a marshal straight straight marshal every time pop flash comes through seth blinded for so long there about five seconds straight but he's able to make it back towards stairs and kind of hunker down here is going to fall to a wall bang from hariri though the eco 5v3 they're able to get this plant down maybe one could be possible here for briarcliff the retake has to come through strong from the saints no ultimates to work with not too much utility either it's looking good for briarcliff so far the time ticking away and Briarcliff was able to get a couple of those rifles, and they're going to get the uh, recon tag there as well. Dark cover going into garage. The sniper shot's getting traded out there. That KO nade to dissuade the push. Four tapping. Going to take out Smissek there. Saint into a 3v3. Four tapping. The one HP. M's going to go down. Four tapping. Still dangerously low. Rezex takes out Sushi. Now 11 HP all on four tapping. The jumping classic is going to be enough. And figures Briarcliff's first round in a 9-1 scoreline is a thrifty. Yeah, with basically just marshals and, and a few sheriffs in hand, it all came down to timing there, too. You see Sushi tries to check left of that Radiantite crate on the site, and it all came down to Rizik just finding that timing on the swing, and it's a great post plan. Like I said, that's what Briarcliff needs to do. Get onto site without losing too much of your own. If you lose your jet, not the end of the world, right? But having those play characters who can lock things down in that post plant is a big one. You saw T-Dumps playing in Garage there from a long ways. Sushi, these aggressive plays Garage have been the bane of Briarcliff for the first eight rounds, I'd say. Yeah, they say they finally caught Caillou that last round, but every other round, they have mm -hmm. ended up losing at least one member, and oftentimes two or three. They just have to find some way to either attack the site, maybe try to make some kind of push through mid. I mean, I was going to say catwalk through tree again. They did that the first couple rounds. M's eventually caught wind of it and, you know, kind of shut things down early on. Seth now going to be the one to play just outside of it here. That land shark drone going to go try to scope out market there, see what he can cook off. The swing, swing though from Sushi, he's going to be good. That's going to be Sova down for Briarcliff. Same have a 5v3 advantage and Briarcliff hasn't really had a way to get entry on site yet. Yeah, after you find Sova there too, you kind of assume the rest of these players are going to be tree. The pop flash comes out. Rezik able to follow up on his own as well. A dink onto Caillou, but it's through the box. T-Dumps can't find that one tap. Caillou's finally going to fall. Three players assisting that one. Four tapping Ooh. from heaven. T-Dumps shut down. That's a big one for the post plant. And Golden Falls as well. Sushi and four tapping to take those ones through. Three for Sushi, two for four tapping in that round. They make it 10-1. You've now hit double digits in the half as we go into this last round. 11-1 half is possible. Uh, not possible. It is actually plausible. probable. Yeah, plausible, <laughs> probable. 
I was gonna, I can't think of any other synonyms right yeah. now, but we'll go with those two for now. But yeah, typically, if a team, it's it's kind of like an unwritten rule. If you get 10 before the half is over, I feel like the win rate is probably like 98%. Mm -hmm. the anecdotally, I'm not, you know, I don't have any analytics to back that up, but I feel like there's no way that percentage yeah. can be any lower than like 95 or so. And if you're the Saints, the way this game has played out, considering the ultimate economy, you've got to be feeling good. I wouldn't be surprised that they maybe try to take a couple, you know, be a little more edgy on this push this time around. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Sushi pops that blade storm. I mean, might as well. Might as well. It's that last round to come through, and you find the first pick off of it as well. Able to reset those knives, keep them in hand, four tapping with another pick. And now three players left for Briarcliff. The round looking dire as they've barely even been able to get any map control or any pushes what? to come through. Ends with the headshot. Can't find the next one, though. Hariri, first one for Briarcliff in the round. But these players are just getting picked off like flies. And it's all going to come down to where's T-Dumps? Sushi. Looks like he might know. Caillou finds wow. that one on the A site. Yeah, Team A is going to go through, and that round from Briarcliff honestly has me scratching my head slightly. You didn't use a single ultimate, even though you kind of got pushed into spawn there. Hariri playing the jet with the blade storm, potentially able to be activated, sat back on the, the backside of A, kind of waiting to bait or B, rather, trying to like maybe bait a teammate mid or try to stack up and double peek, but you didn't use any ultimates. You didn't try to initiate with the jet, which is basically that primary use on Ascent. And he hasn't had like the most terrible game. He's been finding a couple kills here and there, but Briarcliff, you didn't use a lockdown. You didn't get to pop off that last null command. You didn't use the blade storm he didn't end up getting that omen ultimate as well he just feels like there was a lot to be desired in that last round yeah it, a lot to be desired for a, a long time in this game here well, yeah for briarcliff but you've got that half reset maybe you can find some resistance the win is gonna be a long and treacherous journey here for briarcliff but you know maybe figuring out a bit of the same strategy there or just shutting down a bit of the momentum going into map two maybe i mean 11-1 you gotta be realistic at that point it's it's so easy for the saints to grab two throwaway rounds yeah. at some point well and the good thing for briarcliff Cliff is map two couldn't be worse there's no way you could play any worse you at, at all uphill from here mm -hmm. however they don't want to let go of this game just yet they're gonna find a litany of pistol kills there looks like hariri gonna get going gonna find two or three the saints only gonna answer back with one so far the second one gonna be good there caillou though the chip damage gonna be good 35 hp though this is going to be a very difficult situation unless he can find one of those head taps but he has two members still to worry about and again 35 hp to his name I'm telling you, Caillou loves these little, like, micro wall banks here through the tiny little corners as players try to strafe in and out there. There's one on his left, though, not ready for T-Dumps with that right click. It's going to come through. Second round for Briarcliff. Possibly a third incoming with this economy they're going to have built up. And you're playing on that defensive side. It's always, especially when you have those long-range weapons, oh, yeah, right? round it's two always rifles. easier to hold those long angles with those rifles. But Yeah, they're full buying. Sheriffs, Caillou, four tapping. Well, they have to full buy. Yeah. They can't. They can't lose another round and force it to match point, especially with this kind of gap in the score right now. Nine rounds. Yeah, this round pretty much could potentially decide the game. Even if the Saints can take away three of these weapons, assuming they're not the Ghosts, if they can take away the Guardian and one of those two rifles, they're going to find themselves feeling very, very good about how this ended up playing out. Briarcliff, you have to find some way on defense now to dig in. Maybe this Killjoy can give you that extra value that you were looking for but you're gonna have to find some way to stop this Saints offense. Golden trying to lurk on the backside of tree here, catch one of these Saints unsuspecting four tapping, gonna make his way just past Cellar toward A here. Saints right now just do, trying to do some information gathering, but neither team really revealing their hands yet. Yeah, the thing about the Saints here is they know they're on that lower weaponry. They know the force is going to be coming out from Briarcliff. Whether they think it's Spectres or those full rifles that we saw in a few players, they're not going to be pressing. They're not going to be too, too aggressive and, you know, waste their life away in this round. Rezek finds that tap onto Caillou, finds a second one as Seth tries to make that trade. But four tapping has... Walked his way all the way into this site here. Not the player with that spike, <laughs> however, and not the player to find the kill on Rezek. That's a third for Rezek there. On track for the ace on this second round as Ems and Sushi last two alive. No utility on Sushi, just a sheriff in hand and a dream. He's gonna fall, Ems finds one, and Golden 
finishes off that round. Yeah, so the Saints don't really dig into that Briarcliff economy, but you're still going to find one of those frags. Now you should be able to put together that buy they were looking for. This would be the rounds where they start to try to put the capstone on this game. Briarcliff, you're going to have to put together a lot of rounds. So like you said earlier, all the Saints need is one round. All they need to wait for is getting two or three of those ultimates, getting one good round where Caillou or Seth or one of these players finds that first frag. Because these Saints, if they find first blood and or two kills to start the round, they are going to blitz Briarcliff and they're going to have to be ready to try to absorb that pressure. Yeah, they, they have to be ready. Now, want to see how this round will start. We haven't really seen a fast B round from the Saints just yet. Granted, it's only been two rounds in this half. The drone is going to come through. I think oh. it spotted one out. T-Dumps, a great gap great in that track. dark cover there, but four tapping's good for the trade. Four tapping falls from Hariri. Hariri locked down in Boathouse. Can't find any more value there, and that's the B site cleared off. The spike going down from M's. Now you've got Seth in a great position garage to hold this late, late post plant, and you have to wait on these rotations from Briarcliff. Other two players locked down on that B oh. site. Seth falls quickly. He's not ready for that peak from Golden. Yeah, he did tag Golden down to 37, but that man advantage is going to be so helpful for Briarcliff. The zero point is going to tag on pretty much the entire team, but both Saints going to fall. Briarcliff is going to find this defuse and keep this game alive as long as they can. Losing this round would have almost put them in the coffin. Look at the HP as well. Two members going to be around that 25 to 30 range. Very, very close round. 13 seconds left, but they get it done. Yeah, I think it really just started off of Golden finding that pick onto Seth. Seth just peeked out a little too far out of Garage there. Could have played the time a little slower, in my opinion. But nonetheless, you still got, what, a seven-round lead on your hands. And Briarcliff has uh, been working up an economy here, though. You see three players got about 5K in Ooh, the back the pocket. And the Saints are just going to keep forcing these ones out because they just want to force it to that match point, it looks like. Yeah, Hariri does have this op though. And I'll tell you what, the Stinger is nice at all, but if they peek this off at this angle, they're going to be in for a sick surprise. Sushi, gonna get tagged up by that dart mid. It looks like Hariri has that dash. Proc ready to go. The op shot's not gonna be good. The dark cover and the paranoid. The spray down's gonna land a couple shots, but Hariri is going to escape with his life. And now it's the great dash over to tree here. Both teams trying to fight for control of this A site. The Saints are stuck up behind Generator here, trying to stack up in Briarcliff, working their way through Heaven, trying to see what they can spot out here. They are stacked up like sardines right now. That Heaven, Rezek, though, going to find the first kill onto four tapping. Spike's going to get planted. The Blade Storm will get popped as well. Tank. Hariri trying to find it. What a flick from Caillou. Tries to find the second. Golden, double spray down, though. 4v2. Blade Storm still online. Briarcliff looking more than Mary. One trade for one there. Now all on M's. Do they think this other player is under? Golden's good for four in the round. Golden, a player who started off very, very slow on that attacking side, has come through on the defense and been that critical player for Briarcliff to find the last four, four rounds here in this half. Saints still yet to find one here on their attack. Will we see a, a flipped scoreboard here is the question as these sides flip as we get later into this half. Saints... Now they've got rifles in hand. We're going to have another almost dead even round here. Hariri, though, that operator still in play. Yeah, the one good thing about the Saints, like they didn't get as many guns gone from Briarcliff, but the Saints did buy Stingers and Light Armor last round. So it wasn't the worst round. You got some money for the plant. You got a couple kills at least. Now you can put together that full buy. You have that Hunter's Fury if you want to try to use it to initiate, to try to get the engagement going. You have the Null Command as well. Two very, very powerful ultimates. Briarcliff can answer with their own null command, though Hariri still locking down this mid with that op. Rezek going to prepare the pop flash there. Sushi going to be the one caught out with it. Looks like he might be trapped up in this corner. The grenade's going to come in. Sushi's got to dash to safety, but the shots are on point. Rezek and Golden, but Caillou good for two back his own way, and M's going to take out Hariri. I thought M's was going to be done with that op, but he wins out that trade, and now the Saints have that man advantage. The top fire back and forth. Seth just going to have to re-engage, though. The battle of the Killjoys not going to be finished off just yet, but Caillou finishes off a third from Briarcliff as it's Smithsuck who falls, this and is looking the rough. plant comes through on A. T-Dump's the only one left from the side of Briarcliff. He's playing towards this, just kind of this pizza market area. It's where he has his alarm bot set up as well. Look so at the pinch. he doesn't have to worry about behind him necessarily, but these players are so ready. Seth, he was looking that way, but 
The shots come out first oh. from T Dumps. M's nice on shot. that left side. A great shot as he holds that angle. Yeah, say 30 HP. I was going to say, if he takes up Caillou in one shot, M's could very well fall here. And all of a sudden, we have that 1v1 that we were looking for. But Briarcliff, now you find yourself on a match point. The Saints are so close to now closing out this one. They didn't have to really burn any ultimates either. I think they kept every single one that round. This should be a very, very explosive round for both sides. Briarcliff, you got to throw it all on the table now and see if any of it will stay. Otherwise, you're going to be going over to Pearl, which is the Saints map pick down 0-1. Yeah, we've seen the Saints have some, like, even more dominant games on Pearl than this. I mean, I don't know if you can get more dominant than this, but at least that first half I'm yep. more so referring to. And, uh, most likely a timeout coming through here, but we just take a second to appreciate this this HyperX competition stage beautiful. we got here. And now all of you beautiful viewers on the broadcast get a nice, nice view. Okay. Oh. Okay, Coach Owen. I'm not sure if that was genuine or if he's being real extra there, but as you can, I don't know. What song see, started playing? Yeah, so it's a jam in there, but yeah, you can see we got the Valentine's Day confetti and the little hearts up on the stage, you know, tis the season of love, the season of Sea Val. I mean, it's got Val in the name, so of course, you know, it goes oh, yeah. hand in hand for February. Valorant, I know, Valorant is, you know, February National Game Month or whatever, however you want to spin that one around, but Briarcliff, right now, you're going to have a pretty mixed buy. When you're going shorty, actually, it's going to be Sushi on the shorty in full armor. I was looking at the wrong team there. Oh, he's got the blade storm. I was going to say, why would you ever? <laughs> I think he's doing a little bit of not trolling, but in keeping the economy, I guess, just in case the Saints do drop this round. Yeah, that's the thing. The jet, especially when you've had that blade storm yeah. for a few rounds, I... <laughs> you want to use it eventually. Yeah. Keep some money in your back pocket, especially now that you're on match point. The more full buy rounds you can just have, make the sure. better. Yeah. And that blade storm is essentially a full buy. You really only need one pick as well to pick up a gun and then you can take something like a phantom or a vandal over to that next round or maybe even an operator oh, if you're beauty. lucky enough. Caillou with that Hunter's Fury, he's been amazing on these this entire season. Just so good at shutting down rotations and catching people off guard because sometimes it's hard to try and predict that Hunter's Fury. Hariri though is going to shut him down before Caillou can get any more value. They've got the player advantage. They're looking to push on this site. Two come through stairs. M's not good for those kills. Four tapping keeps it going though. But in the end, Golden keeping Briarcliff in this game. He's able to shut them down near market. Rezek on site. Clears out the site. Finds the defuse. 12-6 now. Briarcliff grabbing as many rounds as possible. Just no more room for error. Yeah, the Saints got what they wanted that round. They walked on to B completely for free. They found the plant. They found the first pick. They got the null command burned. It took a, a little bit of a heavy investment from Briarcliff. They had to burn a couple of those ultimates, at least try to use, you know, they had to get that full buy going too. So now the Saints, though, you're going to be stuck on that half to medium buy. Because of that last round, you're not going to have as many of those ultimates as you were hoping for. So Briarcliff now, this is your window to get back in the game. If you can take this round, the Saints economy is going to be in the dumps for the next two rounds. You can theoretically push this to 12 8 12 9 and at that point all it takes is one or two slip ups and you are right back in this game yeah i mean briarcliff even right now looking somewhat right back in this game hariri finds that first pick of the round make it a second this entire team clearing him out three for hariri a flawless round to come through i think it was golden and smithsook who found those other two kills briarcliff quick rounds every time that saints are on those ecos but that wasn't even a they full invested. eco. That That's just, what I mean. They fully invested. That was a very mixed buy. It was like Caillou had a marshal but and it was full three armor. rifles, full armor. Yeah, it was a very, very weird mixed buy. But looks like they were just trying to get everyone on the team back to the same economy level. Now we've got kind of this reset to come out. But it's a save round. I mean, it's looking all Briarcliff's round to win here. Especially when you're on that defense, full buys. And you've only got sheriffs pushing into you. Yeah, the one thing to consider, it is 12-7. It's not like it's already 12 to 10. The Saints, mm. realistically, you can afford to drop one or two of these rounds. Things will still be okay. But the pace of the game, the momentum, is what you have to be worried about. But as far as the game state, they should still be in a pretty decent spot again. You're playing for the alt economy. You're playing to try to stack up those rifle sushi. Deciding he wants no part of that market beat. Kariri is going to proc that dash and get it ready as well to try to get that crossfire set up. Ben's going to check pizza. There's one member in market, though. Kariri's going to be good for that one. Maybe takes one bullet of damage there the swing on the re-engage m's gonna fall as well so once again these saints are getting cut down at the knees before they can even really get a push going 
Yeah, a little bit of damage to come through onto T-Dumps. A Nano Kobe. Swarm as well. Is that just going to shake him down? No, he's caught in that corner, but a perfect pixel right out of that one. I think he jumped up on the box, actually, is what it was. The body yeah, shot to come yep. through from Seth. Alarm bot, but three health. It's just going to take one stray bullet through a wall or even a shock dart like that. It won't take much. Seth, four tapping is able to get this plant down. Seth pushes forward through that cloud burst. Four tapping finds the headshot. Hariri's good for three. Rezek finishes it off. I believe Rezek found the other kill in that one as well. Now 12 8. Saints should be back on this by now. But like you said, Jobin, they've guaranteed themselves the 12 8. You find one or two more rounds, and this is a very, very competitive game we found ourselves into. Look at that scoreboard. Still only one round each of these teams has found on attack. And Smithsack has the Odin. Guess where he's going to play? <laughs> Poss possibly B Garage. Possibly? Maybe looking through that weird little dog painting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What? Yeah, so we're going to see that off. Now we're going to see T Dumps actually on the op. So the op and Killjoy Hariri has the Blade Storm in the back pocket. And like we said, Briarcliff, they got a lot of money in that back pocket. They could really start to snowball this game. However, though, the Saints do have a pretty decent buy. The zero point. Going to tag up Sushi there. Shut down that utility for at least a moment. Briarcliff, too, as far as ultimates, they have that Blade Storm already. They do have that lockdown, and there's no Hunter's Fury to try to combat that. This could be an excellent play. The headshot is clean. Caillou gonna fall to T Dumps. The Kelp and Killjoy and the Odin spray on the crossfire through market. Gonna be good to take down Seth and Briarcliff once again. Even if the Saints were to win this round, it is going to become very, very expensive. A hundred percent agreed there, Jobin. Two players, Ems and Sushi. We're gonna make this duo play here. Tree, no pop flash to even come out though. Rezek finds that headshot the second Sushi peeks out and M's just kind of caught in mid here. Revealed as well. Oh my Smith's god. Like just wow. barely whipping <laughs> on the him odds? and right, literally painting a picture around him through that wall. Grab M's silhouette there, but did he? Oh, he did spot him now. Definitely spotted him now. Tagged Took a little bit of damage himself, but M's. Still slowly creeping up this mid area, but a 2v5 for Ems and Four Tapping to try and make happen here. Not too much damage to speak of on Briarcliff, other than a few players as well. Yeah, you just have to make this expensive if you're the, if you're the, if you're the Saints, rather. They're going to go one for one there. Four Tapping, the last one standing now. He's going to peek over toward Cat there with that jet. Only 11 seconds, and he does have that spike, but this is ultimately going to be a save. And honestly, good idea. 4v1. This weapon for the Saints is worth a lot more than taking one out of Briarcliff's hands. Briarcliff has 6, 7k. They're going to refill that mm -hmm. one, and no questions asked. If the Saints were to lose that rifle, that is a much more significant drop. But we are sitting here at 12-9 now. Briarcliff, pretty much a full arsenal of those ultimates. They're going to still have that full buy, the Odin, that op. A full arsenal. The Saints are going to be stuck on a bit of a half here. Maybe a hero rifle or two, but this game is starting to get real close. Yeah, real tense here on Ascent. Both of these teams just, it, we saw it in the first half, we're seeing it now. The attack is just shut, shut down so perfectly by this comp, this ascent comp that so many teams have adopted. Almost every team has adopted it at this point because all of the utility just works together in tandem so well that these angles are so easy to hold on that defense. Sushi though, gonna burn a lot of utility there. Both cloud bursts. Updraft as oh. well, making it straight on to site, clearing that one out. Now, finally, that spike's going to move towards. First pick comes through from four tapping as well. Player advantage, but four ultimates from Briarcliff. Look at Blade the Storm HP. and Null Command popped. No utility when it comes to the Saints here, except for this Killjoy lockdown that was already popped. Yeah, they got the lockdown pop. The Blade Storm still there. T Dumps on the off. Four tapping going down. Sushi, though, doing a great job to hold that corner. He's going to fall, though. Seth going to find that one bullet kill. Going to send out the Nano Swarm. The Defender Killjoy. Seth and Adam's going to clean things up there on the backside. A fantastic post plant and not a moment too soon. I know those guys had to be starting to sweat just a little bit toward the end of that game. Yeah, 12 7, like maybe you're still like, all right, guys, guys, come on. Come like, on guys. We'll just find one more. But the second those two more rounds come through and you're starting to hurt, in that economy you're yeah. like all right guys let's uh Please. let's step it up here for a sec let's let's make a buy happen yeah. and let's make this round come through and an early pick from four tapping just snowballed that round to victory but yeah. i mean they only found two rounds on attack that whole time yeah. <laughs> three rounds were one on attack that entire map i mean ascent i mean listen ascent on killjoy you know the defense <laughs> setup 
it's typical. It's very, very hard to crack. There's so many small choke points to like tree in those other directions. It's very hard to attack. But if you're Briarcliff, you fought valiantly on Ascent. The only thing was, that was your map pick. Now mm. you have to go over to Pearl, which is going to be that Saints pick. And I know it's a map they feel confident on. They've been playing it a lot last semester in Seaval. They went to that map plenty of times. Pearl becoming, I think, a bit of a fan favorite. A lot mm -hmm. of teams I know enjoy scrimming it. A lot of teams enjoy playing it. So it's going to be a lot more common, I think. It's good that the Saints want to get ahead of it. They have a good grip on that map. But that being said, we do have to wait to go over to Pearl, so we will send it to a very, very quick break, and we will come back with map two just in a bit.
getting into this next map here. Agent Select. See, this is what I like about Pearl. It's been a map that we do see somewhat frequently, but it's also a map with vastly different comps, especially from this Saint side. It's been one that we've seen the Breach on. We rarely see the Breach on any map other than this and Fracture yeah. from them, which is always a treat to see. I think Breach is one of the more exciting agents just with how he lets your team play around you or around the Breach more specifically. Sushi, though, going to be on that main duelist once again, and it's the neon to come out such an exciting pick in my opinion and a, a much more consistent comp from last time when it comes to briarcliff actually they're really just switching out that omen for the astra and keeping everything the way it was from ascent yeah looking at this i'm guessing hariri must be a jet main because jet mm -hmm. while not useless on pearl definitely not that typical duelist neon or phoenix or reyna typically the three that we're gonna see over on pearl i mean pearl there's so many of those short doorways short corners it's like lurk city so those quick pop flashes the ability to get those quick swings jet definitely has utility but neon especially that b long sight it's so hard to attack i believe it's b you have to go long those double neon walls or that phoenix wall are beautiful setups something like the viper maybe but neither of these teams are going to opt for that Seth plays that typical controller or that sentinel rather he's going to be playing that cypher so these aren't the typical pearl comps we see but the saints is more close to what i'm used to seeing in the meta yeah and i mean the saints also uh, a lot of these other maps i think fracture as well they like to experiment a little bit with a few different picks icebox yep. has been one where they've thrown in a few things like the reina like you had talked about earlier <laughs> if we do make it to that map three we have seen some spicy picks come through but yeah just a very right different there. comp from how they typically play although everyone's still fitting into their same roles here yeah. pretty well and i mean again end of the day comfort picks sometimes are better than quote unquote meta picks and mm -hmm. the meta of valorant isn't quite as set as like the meta in league for example in league you know 12 champs are going to be playable at any mm -hmm. given time and the other 10 that are playable are getting pick and banned valorant doesn't have any pick and ban and there's no agents that are like that high prior right now yes on a map like pearl i think astra is very high prio something like the breach is going to be pretty high prio as well but again it's all what what you want to play what you feel comfortable on what has maybe worked in scrims you maybe you thought this wouldn't work and then in scrims you end up just killing everybody so that's always nice to see those adaptations but looks like it's going to be a little bit of a slow push to kick things off sushi though going to take every last bullet of that frenzy to find that first kill and going to take a couple less to find the second yeah make that a second and a great use of that concussion to get out safely as well yep. not allow the trade to be followed up now two players from Briarcliff super low yeah, but it is a 3v3 the trades have came back Caillou finds the tap onto Smissic but that was one of the players that was 20 health anyway you really needed to find it onto Golden but Golden good for that trade has this Astra 2v2 but they don't have much to actually make it onto site here however the Saints seem to just be giving up this A the noise has been cut from Briarcliff and they want to make sure there's no B rotation happening. You send Sushi over there, he's going to be able to sprint back regardless. Yeah, and forget what I said about the high prio picks earlier. They're playing attack on Pearl and they didn't pick Fade. Fade is mm -hmm. probably 100% pick rate on Pearl, especially on attack. There's literally, especially from this A side, there are four to five different lineups with the Haunt. You can keep people guessing. You get those free scans. Again, those short corners are perfect for the Prowlers. Nightfall can basically cover all of A, can cover all of B. Very surprising that Barcliff didn't pick up the Pearl, or the Fade, rather. Sushi, good for his third on the round. Now, Astra v Astra, that bomb was planted. Four tapping, trying to swing over. Can he find the kill? He finds the shots. The kill is good, too. The defuse is going to come through, and the Saints will take defense pistol. Once again, pistol round comes through at the start. A much, much tighter one this time. Came down to that 1v1 Briarcliff. Even after being down two picks at the starting, played that out very well and played it down to that almost at last second before that plant came down. I think there was 10 seconds left in the round when that plant finally did come through. But Sushi finding the one there was huge and not just getting traded out by two or just not getting shut down immediately on the swing. Yeah, getting free kills on pistol, not getting traded out, this is the quickest way to mm -hmm. win that round. You find that quick kill, you get out of there. Now four tapping, gonna be on that hero guardian, so he's gonna have him sit B long, try to stop that B long push. But Briarcliff, honestly, they don't really have anything to push B long. Like, yes, Cloud Burst is nice. Theoretically, with Astro, you can maybe get across that space, but the Astro Stars and the Cloud Burst aren't really wide enough to cover B long well enough to get you on site safely, especially if you're running into that Cypher or running into that 
that breach concussion. It's so difficult to crack. So Briarcliff's offense is going to be one thing I'm very curious to see how they want to execute and where they're going to execute. Yeah, Hariri might find themselves in a tripwire here, but they should be able to hear that one and shut it down. They're just going to wait right out of it, actually, oh, though. Oh, Caillou. Caillou on this swing. He's not able to find Astra on the left there. He sees them. <laughs> Golden okay. just made it out of concussion as well, but Caillou jumps on there, gets that micro reposition, and it's too much for Golden to deal with. Rezik finds one, trade comes through from Caillou. No one's gonna fall there in the end. Seth finally finished off Smithic there, but Hariri's good for one, two v two now. Nice shots. Two players dangerously low as well. Four tapping in Hariri, but four tapping boop. finds the tap onto that one. Yeah, just a little boop there in the head. Hariri gonna well, go down. Now 2v1. T dumps though. We have seen him make plays, and we've seen him make plays with the sheriff too. So this round, no means dead. But I'll tell you what, needing to plant the spike with 16 seconds and pretty much playing that guessing game where any of these members are, that is always going to be so, so difficult. He's got 11 seconds. Looks like he's maybe trying to find a pick, but ultimately it looks more than likely it's going to end up being a Spectre save. Maybe he tries to rush plant here. He'll end up dropping the gun. Not really much to save anyways. The Saints take that second round. Yeah, tries to maybe make that 1v2 happen. I mean, like you said, we've seen we've seen it before from and the that player. Round, we've seen crazy not? kills come through, but... The timing was just against you in that situation. Not to mention, you walked straight past four tapping. The second four tapping here is any audio, even if it's a kill yeah. onto Sep over there, it's just an insta rotate from four tapping, and you may not even have the time to get that plant down in the end. Saints just take that one almost down to the last second, find their second round. Sushi and Caillou up there on the board so far. The Two of the players are kind of expected to see in that kill feed a lot more. Caillou, Marshall in hand. Oh. This is a favored gun from the player, but he's going to whiff that first one. Hariri on top of that box is able to find the headshot. Now it's going to be a push to start to come through. These Astra stars are going to slow it down just a little bit, though. Yeah, that's the one nice thing. You can set those double stars. You can at least get onto site. It's just kind of keeping site. That can be a little bit tricky. Golden, though, going to find that kill. The weapon advantage showing how fruitful it is. All these Saints falling one by one right now. All left to Sep. He's going to find one with the Spectre, though. Only going to eat one bullet of damage, too. Oh, that little jump down onto that elevation. Mm -hmm. Going to mess up that recoil. That is going to be one on the board for Briarcliff on their full buy. Yeah, they take that one back. Saints, okay with that. You're carrying all those weapons over from those last rounds. Now you've got those actual rifles to come through. And you take a look at T-Dumps here. Oh, he is able to grab one from the team there, but didn't actually have the cash for it in the beginning. Golden has that Cosmic Divide up. It's going to be the only ult in the game as of right now. But you see Sushi, you see Caillou, Seth as well. Super close to those. Everyone in this game actually fairly close to their ultimates. Minus the Sova, really, to come through. Start of the round, it's much slower from Briarcliff. I don't think we've seen them stack up mid like this before. Usually only one player is sent here. No, and with this comp, I don't necessarily hate it. Using KO and Jet, you're going to have a lot of utility to kind of skirt around this middle area. Try to, you know, either try to fake left, go right. It gives you a little bit of mobility, at least. A recon dart. Going to get a good amount of information, though. It's going to get them at least aware of that Saint stack up on A. Maybe they're going to think twice now, rotate back toward this middle area. Looks like A still might be the preference, depending on if they want to wait out this util. Couple Astro starts to go out to dissuade Sushi. He's going to walk up here and get ready to challenge. But the rest of this Briarcliff team still much, much more patient, just like you said. Yeah, you see that Jet and Rezik here. Going to pop Flash down Connector, but it's not really much for them to find a little bit of utility. And all they really did was allow Saints, or allow Caillou more specifically, to know exactly where these players are at. But he's not able to find that tap, and Rezek headshots him first. A little bit of damage done, but Caillou, not the gunfight you were looking for. Rezek takes those any day. Now, you're that one player up, and you've got 30 seconds to play with. Here's the collapse towards this B site. Two players on that quick rotate for the Saints. Rezek's gonna fall. No plant just yet, though. They're gonna need to find this Sep through this cage. He's gonna fall immediately as it drops, and the attackers wipe through the rest of the Saints here, tie this one up here on Pearl.
Yeah, Pearl, typically an attacker-sided map with this comp of Briarcliff, though. I like that they're just kind of creating a lot of skirmishes. Like, with this comp, you're going to have to get in there, and you're going to have to fight. And right now, the Saints, the, at least these last two rounds, have kind of struggled to find that answer. And even though this like, Briarcliff hasn't really, like, planted and taken sight and played post-plant, they just kind of been winning out on these gunfights. Like, if Caillou wins that one-for-one, one, then the Saints have that numbers advantage, and the round dynamic changes. But Briarcliff, they're finding first blood, they're finding that second, third kill, or they're finding that bunch of kills where you get two, three members down in the span of a few seconds and they're taking control of that advantage and right now it's resulted in back to back rounds and sushi gonna have to get halted on that run there yeah, he <laughs> tries to get a uh, a quick one peek up there and it looks like it's actually gonna be sushi and four tapping he pops oh, that Pikachu. ultimate able to find one four tapping with the support another kill comes through Here's concussions Pikachu. good these sheriff kills to come through for almost that entire team and all it takes is that Neon ultimate and some follow-up from the boys, and they're able to find that one. A thrifty win for them as well. Look at he had a smile a mile wide on his face after that one. You know how good it feels with that Neon. You just walk up there, you shred with that electricity. A beautiful job from the Saints, and again, you have to start mixing up the playbook a little bit. They hadn't challenged Briarcliff early on in those entries. Now, you pop the Neon ult. I mean, technically it was a thrifty, but that Neon ultimate is anything but thrifty, of course. But now they're going to have those rifles. Well, Seth, once again, or not once again, I thought it was Mikayu. Seth, on that Marshall, full armor, gonna save enough for that full buy. And playing Cypher, you're playing back on site. You're gonna play a lot of long angles. Briarcliff, Bladestorm online for Hariri, though. Maybe got a whiff of Seth. Seth yeah, maybe got a whiff of him. This A site execute looks like it's gonna come through, and I think it's gonna come through pretty quick. Yeah, that drone is spotted out, and a Killjoy lockdown is gonna be good, but Sushi finds one pick over towards. That Asa, or over towards mid actually spawn there. Now you're one player up, the blade storm is popped, but no detain. That that lockdown didn't Waste. really get much space to be grabbed. It was more so oh. from these smokes. What a shot from Hariri. Finds one knife to the head. Can he find Seth's? Seth on a frenzy is able to find that one. Got that Nerf. Marshall in hand, able to get some intel for his team as well. Spot out these players. Huge. Caillou, another tap to come through. Make it a third to finish off that round. 4-2 coming through for the Saints now. Yeah, and what a crazy good play by Seth. He gets to the backside of sight with the frenzy. Takes down one of those rifles, rather the blade storm ends up dying, but he not before he gets that neural theft. He gets Caillou and the rest of the gang. That info they were desperately seeking. They spot out those Briarcliff members, and then they take care of business one by one. Their Rezek and Golden, couple of ultimates in that back pocket. The Hunter's Fury gonna be online soon, but yeah, that lockdown just felt like it was a little bit misguided. And it's one of those times like you don't need to force a lockdown. There is no Hunter's Fury to combat it. If you put this lockdown in a good spot, it should theoretically be safe if you stay in front of it. Yeah, very true there. But the only ultimates really available in this round are going to be those two from Briarcliff. A cosmic divide that we haven't really seen used to its potential thus far in the game. I mean, I don't think only he's used seven it rounds in. Yeah, I don't think he's dropped it just yet. And that's such a great ult to be able to make it onto site. I just don't think Briarcliff has had the prior setup that they necessarily want when they use that Rezek. We've seen this play before, but now there's actually a player to meet him here. Sushi spots out his shoulder. No damage done, though. He's got to be careful. So many members on the other side, though. And he's going to have to reload in a couple seconds here, too. Seth going to take an early exit this round. Tidum's taking out Caillou, so two of these members are already going to be down. That Cypher offline as well. Going to hinder that defense a little bit before tapping. He might have his eyes on that mid flank. See if he gets spotted out. Sushi going to put the Nikes on and go for a little stroll backside there. T dumps trying to see if he can wait out M's here. He's checking out Heaven as well. It's gonna be all that guessing game where these Saints are stacked up, but B Long definitely going to be the play. That headshot's gonna be good. That's gonna open up this B site. The plant should come through, and it'll be a 5v2 to post plant. Yeah, it's gonna sort of force Sushi to kind of back off here. He has to pick. Does he wanna go Heaven? Does he wanna go under Heaven there? Four tapping finds one pick down long. Now you've kind of got a pinch going between these two players, oh. and the taps are coming through. Two from four tapping. Sushi gonna drop that fast lane as well. Cut off a few angles. Slide oh. right through. He finds another. He made it down to a 1v1. 30 health in hand. Sova 
Got everything he needs in terms of intel. He's got shock darts. He's got the sonar and he's able to find that body shot. Smysek is able to make the third round happen. Keep this one more even for this team. Yeah, that was so, so close. And what a beautiful, beautiful round. Briarcliff hanging in there at the end. It was looking very, very dicey. The Saints were finding those frags on the backside, but Briarcliff was able to hold fast in that in that attack, rather, able to lock down that B site, eventually hit it. And that B site, again, we're still waiting for that cosmic divide. Typically, you're either gonna split it diagonally on A, maybe you're gonna use it to split off that B long, but I guess they haven't really needed it either, to be fair. The two rounds they won, they didn't really need to use it, and the one round they were going to lose, it probably would have been a lost cause at that point, mm. but you would like to find some angle to use it, because at this point, I think it's been three, four rounds of having it, not using it at this point, you would have been close to using a second one anyways. That's that's true. I mean, you would have gotten it back at this point, even just from even if it's not max one value. or two kills. Exactly. Golden finds the first pick of the round two. That would have been another kill towards that next cosmic divide. But now you've got three amazing ultimates in hand. The Hunter's Fury too. You're not worried about shutting down that enemy lockdown this game. So it really, you shouldn't be hesitant to throw that one out, especially if it'll secure you around. But yeah, another pick comes through. It's going to the Saints this time, but. Caillou and M's down for this Saints team. Four players alive for Briarcliff. Looks like they want to make this one B. That alarm bot is going to give the intel that the Saints need, though. You are you see that instant rotation yeah. come through. Yeah, and this Hunter's Fury, it can be very, very good for playing that post plant, trying to stop that defuse, but Pearl has so many very skinny chokes. You could get a lot of damage trying to catch a team off guard, even with a lucky dart or two. Tap fire gonna be good. Rezak now gonna go into that null state. Hariri though gonna take out four tapping. Two Saints left alive in this 2v3. Seth gonna drop that cage. Maybe gonna try to stick this defuse. The fake comes through. He's gonna swing, find the headshot. T dump's gonna be down. That's gonna take those killjoy nanos off the board at least. Hariri and Golden though gonna be good to go on that double. They're gonna take those Saints out. And now we're gonna sit at a 4 4 score line. Yeah, that Astro Well set up for a microwave to come through. The nano swarms get shot out, but when it's one player shooting, shooting at you from heaven, one player peeking out from you under, there's not much you can do, especially Seth lost so much health in that fight. He has to try and stick that one and the 2v2 doesn't come through. Tied up by Briarcliff. Three ultimates in hand. Bladestorm Use the cosmic backup. divide. Bladestorm is one that we have seen Hariri perform well on and early picks from the Bladestorms too have given Briarcliff, I think one of their rounds here was easily found from an early Bladestorm pick, and it was on to Seth as well, I believe. Will they make it happen again? Hariri can tell he's looking to get aggressive. Yeah. He's following up on this Owl Drone. Make Look sure you check wires. your left there, too. Has to, has to spot out all of these yeah. wires. Listen, Cypher is uh, not to be trifled with, especially I'm sure sephi has got those cheeky little lineups. Rezek going to send that grenade out there, try to get that pulse damage. The Breach Util going to come back the other way. The Prowlers and that KO nade going to go out there. Rezek still lurking backside of Art here, trying to see what Briarcliff's decision to push is going to be. They do still have the blades, but Seth has the timing. Hariri is going to go down. That is a big ultimate down. Now, if you're Briarcliff, do you try the Hunter's Fury? Do you try the Cosmic Divide? Do you try anything to try to take away this round? Or do you accept that the Divide is going to come through and the Hunter's Fury? So they must have been listening. They're going to use both of those ultimates. He's going to find some tags. He is going to find a kill onto Seth. Still a 4v3, though, and they still have to get plant, and Sushi is lurking on the flank. Sushi makes a little too much noise though, but Smysek behind you, he dude. hears it, turns around. You know who doesn't turn around is Sushi. T dumps right behind him. He shot a few bullets by Check him. him too. Eyes, yeah, baby. The, the tracers were uh, were interesting, but nonetheless, a three v one for the Saints. Fourteen seconds left. Spike down as well Look at here. That stack. Looking very very plausible for this win to come through. T-Dumps knows there's no time. He wants to get a pick or two, maybe find the third, but Caillou, those micro wall bangs like we talk about all the time, right through that little corner, maybe is able to do just so enough damage because I guess the thinner the wall is it that you get more damage yeah. through, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a little bit higher of chip damage at least. It might not take like that headshot to find the kill. Maybe a couple mm -hmm. of those body shots going to do the trick. At least Briarcliff, the funny thing is they finally invested all their ultimates and they ended up dropping the round. And they used yeah. like every single thing in the back pocket. Now you have the lockdown. Maybe you can find some kind of play with this. You did have enough money to put together that full buy again. The Saints yeah. going to be just as fortunate. Although Pikachu is about to leave the Pokeball. Sushi trying to get ready to maybe run it down B-Long one more time and try to find these kills.
Yeah, two players stacked up here as well. Sushi might be good for one. Nobody wants to be the one to peek into this Neon Ultimate. It's Slides just a into mess. The okay. well, that's an interesting that's play ambitious. there. That's Golden shuts that one down easily. I mean, you hear the slide, just watch your well. Anyone who crosses through that smoke is going to be sucked into the middle there. M's going to be droned out as well. Has to rotate back towards this site. Briarcliff taking it back to a slow game now that they found that first pick. Don't want to give up anyone else and maybe try to just bait more utility out of the Saints here. Maybe even you bait a Cosmic Divide or, or a Rolling Thunder and that's insane value for you right now. Yeah, and at least for that Neon Ultimate, I think the Saints, you know, it worked the first time for Sushi. Briarcliff this time, like you said, they had seven, eight layers of utility ready to take him out. They did a fantastic job to play that patience game. And now they're going to offer this B long push. Caillou, though, stuck in the backside of that. KO a huge Rolling Thunder. Three go up into the sky. First kill going to be found. The Haunt going to go to that far side. Going to get destroyed, though. The tap not gonna be good. Razak first kill. M's eight HP. Golden down to 19. HP bars for two Briarcliff members actually very, very low. Four tapping though, sitting at full HP. M's getting that aftershock and these pop flashes ready. Trying to see if he can maybe create one of these angles. Smithsek shoulder to shoulder with these Saints. The plant is gonna get started with 10 seconds left. The flash is beautiful and the Astro well. M's and four tapping getting work put in. Four tapping good for two. All on T dumps now. Doesn't have the spike, doesn't have the time. And a cosmic divide from the Saints there to cut off that last player as well. M's eight health in that round, plays out the rest of his utility perfectly there. All he needed to use was those two flashes. And as he pops them, the spike planter drops from himself, by the way. That is a bold peek to make yeah. with eight health left. But you know you got to shut down that plant. And the rest of the round just allows that time to tick away as everyone else falls from these rotations on that Saints. Now, Briarcliff taking this time out here. I don't think Saints have taken a timeout yet in this series. To be fair, game one until it, the end. There wasn't, it's almost, calling a timeout can almost be bad in some mm -hmm. senses too. If you're you up give like the other team, the stock time? momentum. Yeah, yeah. If you're up like a, le like, let's say like nine to three and you call a timeout and you're, and you're riding hot, you're flowing. It kind of, mm -hmm. you can put like a stop to the flow of the game. You give the other team. It's like, because both teams get a timeout in the sense, right? Briarcliff, yeah. if the Saints call a timeout, Briarcliff also gets a minute <laughs> to discuss. Look at <laughs> big, muscular, handsome man, Sushi right on the end there. Resident Neon main at least, but so far he has played extremely well. And the Neon just so much value on Pearl and Briarcliff. We consider Pearl to be an attack-sided map, so if the Saints can walk away 8-4-7-5 sitting on defense, I think they're going to be feeling very, very good about where they're standing. Yeah, these guys on stage just kill me, man. This Valorant and, team is we like... We talked about last semester, you'd hear the ghosts of them in the other broadcasts. It, we we always so, mention them. Like, obviously, they're very serious about Valorant, don't get me wrong, but such a light-hearted roster. They just yeah. keep things keep things light on stage and i think that comes through to kind of keep the mental very very calm as well like yeah you don't see even in that last even in that ascent game where the comeback started to come through you didn't see them starting to panic too too much yeah yeah, that's the one thing. They seem to, you know, all at least be in good standing with each other, so uh, any mistakes. But the one thing is, you know, the gameplay, you don't want to get too lax sometimes. Mm -hmm. They like to have a little bit, you know, too much fun depending on the game. Agreed. But it's all playing that balancing act, being able to manage, you know, when to turn it on there. And this team right now looks like they're turning it on. This lockdown getting ready to get sent out there. The Prowler, though, to try to disengage. That lockdown is going to clear out most of the B site. It is going to clear out that back hallway at least. The Saints, though, still going to be in very good position to defend after. Caillou has to move out of this lockdown, but no one oh. to actually one player detained He'll there. He'll just be hiding wherever Who it is. is it going to be is the question. Four tapping spots two. He goes for the repeak as well. One more time. Just barely whiffing over Smysek's head, and Caillou's good for two in the back there as well. Golden, the only one to find a kill so far. And a save round that falls apart for the side of Briarcliff. The one rifle that was able to be picked up, T-Dumps, falls down oh. long and a headshot not going to do enough damage with that classic. Probably only really 70 done there yeah. in the end after all was said and done. Yeah, still a nice shot. Unfortunately, though, not going to be enough. And the Saints take that one. Like I said, just play for that retake. If Briarcliff wants to invest every bit of utility, you're basically just playing cooldowns at that point. Okay, if they invest everything before they get the plant down, once this plant comes down, what are they really going to have left to stop mm -hmm. us? And then once you find a couple of those frags like they did, you had Sushi crossing with the op. You had Caillou getting in the backside of site. Four tapping was running up and going for those repeaks. Everything just worked together in harmony there. And now we're sitting on the last round of this half. Looks like not a single ultimate will be in the bag. Maybe Golden gets to that cosmic divide, but it will be all based on the weaponry this time.
Yeah, uh, no ultimates really to be spoken of at the starting here. Smysek, this drone. They'll get the orb at least for it. Oh, they gave it to... That's weird. Okay. I mean, no command. No command is a big oh, one. Oh, I thought they gave it to the Sova. That's why I was like... Uh, yeah, I, it makes more sense. It's going to be popped. I mean, we see how many times Ems has been able to use that utility on that yeah. B site to just shut down these pushes. He's going to shut down Rezik as well. Three kills come through. Make it a fourth. Make it a fifth. And they all fall. Everything comes tumbling down in the end. An 8-4 half. Going to go the way of the Saints. Now the Saints gonna have to flip this one over. Make this attacking run here in this second half. Yeah, attacking on Pearl with Fade is an absolute joy and i know caillou has tons oh, of yeah. these hot lineups this has been one of his primary agents fade on a, just one of the best agents in the game one of the most versatile not great on every single map but just how much utility you can dump at people yet letting the prowlers have that auto lock on after the haunt the nightfall can sweep basically both of these sites in its entirety such a strong pick and a it would pretty much be an A push, I bet, 80% of the time, and it will always be on the back of Caillou and potentially M's. And if they decide to go B, it's going to be four tapping and Sushi setting up that utility mostly. Yeah, one thing I did kind of just realize is, yeah, they've, the Saints here with both Astra and Fade there have the two, like, sucks, or I guess the two, like, movement yeah. uh, locks in the game. But with that Astra, well, with that other Fade utility there, Smysek finds that first one here now that it's a pistol round briarcliff can you know kind of reset not be too too worried <laughs> a little 1v1 be long <laughs> i mean why not let it happen ems taps onto rezek as well now one player down b one player down a golden oh. evens that one up look at these amazing positioning from the teams now 2v2 but <laughs> seth dangerously low when it comes to his health here I'm curious to see if Seth and Riri go to B-Long once again. I see in so many series I cast on Pearl, it's almost like a gentleman's agreement mm -hmm. between two players to always go check B-Long. Usually it's the two controllers or the two Sentinels. You have like, it was used to be the two chambers. Two chambers would be Very agreed. True. Pearl round starts, two chambers, we're gonna go B-Long and we're gonna duke this one out with the Headhunter and we're gonna see who wins this one out. Now, a much, much different approach. The Saints have that Astra and have that Cypher, so they're gonna play way the heck off this bomb. They plant that thing right in the middle. They're gonna make Briar Cliff have to burn all these stars to try to set something up for tapping though i think he just got a little bit of information on golden there gonna look for the swing seth waiting in the backside as well the shots are gonna be good down goes seth though he was low on hp for tapping both of these members one bullet will take him out first one down looking for the second one the diffuse is gonna be started but it's all in the timing for tapping just playing around a little bit going for the 360 it's not gonna matter though that's gonna be nine on the board for st Clair. pistol round secured perfectly played out there long with that timing even after Seth falls early four tapping just never over extending on those peaks finding one pot shot whether it hit or not yeah he's going back in and he's giving them another 50 50 am I coming right am I coming left yep. and during all that time they couldn't even hop the bomb because that star was just chilling there the whole time yeah and, and, and say planting that one is just dead smack in the middle like yeah. okay i'm willing to take whatever fights we have to take as long as this spike stays in the open and now the saints we're gonna see them actually try to force this round out which i actually love in this spot you get to that early double digits if you can get to that neon ultimate especially you send that fast lane down be long try to find a couple picks with the ultimate and you can find yourself stealing one more round away without even needing to invest that much so they're going to see if they can take this one. They're going to split maybe toward this B long push this time. So want to try to keep Briarcliff guessing, it looks like. Yeah, they haven't really started any rounds with five players B thus, thus far. Now, going straight into this one. Sushi on this Neon, but you're peeking into a shorty, even full blind. All you need to do is find a few of those pellets to hit. That's two players down from the Saints on the entry. Seth, though, Bulldog and the Spec to come in these weapons are so so good on that second round anyone who's unarmored is just gonna be shredded oh. away golden shuts down that plant though even through the cage kind of low 2v1 and Caillou's dangerously low but 
Only a classic in hand versus a bulldog here for Seth. Seth peeks out. He's able to find the third kill of the round and finish off that bonus round for the team. I'll tell you what, Golden's pretty nice. And like pretty nice with the classic. A couple different yeah. rounds now. He's been in like a 1v2 and legitimately made it concerning if he was going to take that round or not. But he will not be able to finish that one off. They take a couple of those SMGs away from St. Clair. They're going to have their own version of a full buy now. Just that Guardian and that Light Armor to round out on Tedems. The Saints sticking with what they got. They are more than happy to do so. So Seth already has that neural theft two rounds in as well. So these again, these ultimates for the Saints are all so so impactful as well. The same for Briarcliff, but not really any ultimates in this game that are like wasted or anything. Or like the Omen ultimate that has super high value. Yeah, that's true. Actually, nothing to just be thrown away into as the like wind. Really, yeah, it yeah, all has like super good had... use. Every ultimate, every almost every piece of utility has had the intended impact. I mean, take a look back to that last half. We saw an amazing rolling thunder. Oh. First picks to come through, one for one, but it's all gonna go Briarcliff's way in the end. Trades are good. Taps from Caillou. We've seen them be able to shut down Briarcliff with these eco weapons before and just take them over. Now, rifle in Caillou's hand. He's got two Prowlers available as well, but one's gonna swing him right now. Hariri finds that no tap. Theft. Seth's the only one left. Three players all spotted out for him, creeping through his own circling him. <laughs> there was no way he was getting out of that one. They were literally closing, like the doors were closing in on him. Now Briarcliff, they're gonna work their way to that cosmic divide, that neural theft. I don't necessarily hate the idea, especially if you think you're gonna get it back quick. I know it's only that six point ultimate, so you can get it back relatively quickly, but that round was already kind of in shambles. The buy going to be in somewhat of shambles as well for these Saints. Looks like maybe a couple rifles. They're gonna try to force this one out as much as possible. Again, they're just trying to play to that sushi alt, play to the of these ultimates and then they're gonna really try to take over this game yeah five rounds up you've got a little bit of an advantage in terms of not necessarily economy but momentum for sure this yeah. briarcliff team there's been a few moments where it's looked like they've shut down the pushes and then suddenly the bombs down three members from briarcliff fall and everything else just seems to keep snowballing from there but Briarcliff picked up a little bit of money from that last round, so at least gonna keep these guns going. Yeah, it's gonna give them at least a little bit of a lifeline here to try to keep this game extended. And yeah, same. this is like that same part of last game we kind of had where the game, Briarcliff was on a nice, a little bit of a nice run. The game was kind of hanging in the balance. They made it very, very close, and then the Saints eventually closed that door. But we are treading towards similar territory. Saints once again gonna opt for this B push, that A push. I mean, the Cosmic Divide actually gonna come through there. I was gonna say that B push, a lot more useful with the Cosmic Divide. Sushi gonna get taken out the fast lane there though. Caillou, at least there to trade out that one. Pop Flash gonna go through the spray down through that wall. Gonna get a couple chip shots. M's there to finish off that kill on Rezek. They're gonna get tagged up by that Recon Dart though. I the Tidum Shrine, they're in a beautiful cross. Not gonna be good enough though. M's good for three. Caillou there to finish off that one. They're gonna find the plant for a couple extra bucks. Five HP, get a few extra dollars in that back pocket and get one round closer to match point. The utility is just playing together perfectly here. Even with that first pick coming through from Hariri, it's an instant trade from Caillou, the flat, the flash lane, the fast lane already down from that neon as well, which basically means you've got coverage from the entire rest of the site. Double that up with a cosmic divide and Ems is able to just go crazy on site, start wall bang and everybody find three in the round and it just all keeps moving from there. Now the timeout comes through from Briarcliff and I'm interested to see exactly what buys are coming through next because now you're back into a similar position you were on Ascent where you can't really risk giving away any more rounds now that it's 11 rounds for the Saints. Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't keep waiting to use those ultimates again either because mm -hmm. you did that in the first half. Maybe it doesn't impact the score that much, but like, you can't take it into that next round to see Val. You have to use it while you have a chance here on Pearl. I think they have the Cosmic Divide. They might have the Lockdown too, so you're going to have some ability to stop the Saints push, but you are going to have to win gunfights. Most of this game, honestly, it hasn't really been much post-planned. It's been a lot of, or if it's been post-planned, it's been like once or yeah. twice per half. The rest of it has just been, we got the first two kills of the round. We kind of slowly flooded the site and just got the rest of the kills out that way. Yeah, like the, the plants haven't been the main thing that are dictating the wins, except for a few pistol Couple rounds small that times, we've seen. Yeah. That's about it. But yeah, it's been much more of a, a TDM, almost like elimination yeah. style game here right now. <laughs> Search and destroy yeah, pretty to much. come through, but... 
yeah, it's the ultimates are a very big thing. I think other than Hariri, I don't know who else on BCU has really used their ultimate even more than twice in this game. I don't even think we've seen that cosmic divide twice, which is such a key True. one to splitting up teams, finding your executions on that attacking side. But now that you're on defense, it's so easy to shut down pushes with that because this Saints team never knows what's on that other side. Yeah, you never know what's behind that mystery door. Yeah, Briarcliff, though, you have to start finding some way. Like we said, even if you're not finding a three-man detain, try to help your teammates set something up, zone off a certain part of mm -hmm. the map, try to get something going the other way. Maybe some kind of distraction, maybe some kind of other piece of utility you want to layer. You have to find some wrinkles to the game plan. And now that we're this deep into the game, both these teams probably have a pretty good read on what they want to do. Now you have to start to make those adaptations. You have to start to make adjustments. And if you're Briarcliff, you have to find some way to do it very very quickly because like we said two rounds away from potentially being out of sea valor dropped into that lower bracket however the the format works out there yeah, i believe this that this round of 32 is just single elim oh, i you have don't to make think it to there tomorrow. was a lower yeah. one yeah i believe that top, top eight, eight that's lower yeah is that's gonna what it go was. into a, a double elim playoffs there yeah. and everyone kind of gets reset to that winner side or i guess stays in the winner yeah. side yeah. from the single elim there but looks like we may have a tech pause coming through here these uh guys are Timeouts taking when you a little see, extra When you see hands off long. keyboards, yeah. usually it means a couple minutes, yeah. Yeah, we are going to have a tech pause. So I think with that being said, we can probably throw it to a very, very mm -hmm. quick break. Hopefully come back after the break. Saints, two rounds away from winning map two. And tech, believe the tech pause has been fixed. Hopefully the players now getting back into their positions on stage. So Briarcliff, I guess you get a little bit of an extra timeout. You get a little bit of a tech timeout there. You get a minute or two to try to reassess, try to rethink and revamp this strategy because right now your back is against this C Val wall. This Saints team starts like, it feels like they have started to make the correct reads. Now it's on Briarcliff on this defense. I will say, I just saw the buy for a brief moment. This round is not looking too spicy for Briarcliff. Yeah, and it's going to be a tough one to pull Forgot through. Broke. Really, <laughs> the only solid weapon you've got here is a Marshall in T-Dump's hands. And we've seen him put some value in on this Marshall before, but nothing more than one or two in a round. Look Sushi gets in deep onto this site. Two picks early. That's going to be KO and Astra down. Hariri lurking in that smoke is able to find one. But now you're in a 1v3. T-Dump's only Marshall in hand. Nothing else really to work with. You're playing that Killjoy. You don't got much to try and clear out angles here on this site. And that is exactly how you hit the A site when you have the eco advantage, mm -hmm. when it is 11 to 5, especially oh, when you take out those ultimates. Seth trying to lurk on the backside of that flank there. He's going to get tagged out, spotted out the Astro Well, though. Maybe going to get that recoil going sideways. He's going to find the kill on the T-Dumps. And the Saints are now going to find themselves on match point. And they have that Nightfall. They've got Pikachu ready to go. Now, Briarcliff, you got to find it now or your Seaval dream is over. Yeah, one more round match point here someone's, for the someone's Saints. Got bless Check Caillou. out Sushi. Shorty in hand, but that ultimate it's is neon too. ready. 
if there's one character that needs a shorty, it's like Jet and Neon, because you can just oh, get right in someone's face, and all and of a sudden, out. exactly, yeah, you get the kill, get that recharge on the slide, take that fast lane out of there. We see Caillou. I don't know if he, I think he got blessed with the rifle. He did have a classic for a moment there. Sushi already trying to get going with this ultimate. Gets a little bit of chip damage, I believe, on the one. He's going to swing into the entire team, though. M's going to go down, too. So Briarcliff, they're going to keep this round alive at least 5v3. They shut off that Neon ultimate. Second time this game, Sushi got KO'd on it. Now Smisek takes out Caillou, too. Only two of these Saints members left. Briarcliff, they have dug in for this match point. They are not ready to say die. Is this peak gonna come through? Seth falls in the end. Briarcliff stays in the game and stacks up the ultimates too. Check out that top right of your screen there. All Ooh. five available operator in hand for Hariri. This is as solid as you're gonna get to keep yourself in the game. Can you keep it going for six to seven rounds straight? Well, six to tie it up, and then overtime is the question. I'll tell you what, Caillou only having that Nightfall, the Saints do have a pretty damn good buy, but if you have an Operator, full armor, and five ultimates, and you somehow lose this round, you have got to figure out some way to reassess how you want to play Pearl. They have to make sure they use these ultimates. I mean, it's use it or you lose it. So at this point, while you might have a slight weapon advantage, armor advantage, you don't want to throw this round away. It's better to use the ultimate to be safe, to ensure victory, to ensure that this game is going to keep going. There's the Nightfall. Caillou, though, going to get hit with that zero point. Not going to be able to use that follow-up Prowler. That Null Command going to get put on the backside of it as well. Bladestorm now going to come online, so these ultimates now are going to come into the fold. Briarcliff realizing it's now or never. Has to make this push here. The Bladestorm comes out. That Null Command burned as well. No picks to come through early except for Sushi, and that's going to be golden down. That's one of the ultimates that was left. Rezek, good for that trade. Caillou's finding their own, and more members of Briarcliff fall. Hariri falls as well, but two come back. Now we're in a 2v2, and t has that lockdown available. Rezek in the corner, that wall bang. Man, Caillou is solid with those. Yeah, hasn't got the spike quite yet. Should be able to recover it, but he's making sure no one's on that backside lurk just a couple feet away there. T-Dumps and Caillou, 30, 30 seconds, seconds left. left. Spike now retrieved by Caillou. Gonna go for default plant spot more than likely, but he has to play that guessing game. That's the problem. The second he gets on that spike, he knows that audio cue. He might be going for the fake plant, try to lurk around here. Gonna fake it once more. He's ready for the swing. He's got a haunt ready as well. Now he's gonna use that haunt to buy himself that second or two. Should be able to finally get this spike planted down. And now we're back to this 50-50. Him and T-Dumps. T-Dumps going for the high ground, and it's going to work beautifully. He's going to take that round and keep this game going. 12 to 7. This is exactly what we saw from Briarcliff last game. Match point backs up against the wall, but they stood up and took it very, very far. Now we're back to 12 to 7, and great economy in their hands as well. Look at the guns to come through. However, Saints feeling solid on their buys as well. Seth Neural Thrift Theft ready, but not too much in terms of guns. Like, it's not the worst buy I've seen, but definitely could use improvement. Yeah, and besides Hariri, that was actually a very good round for the Saints. You took away four of those weapons mm -hmm. and two of those ultimates. The Saints basically, like last game, if we can push this game to 12-9, we're going to have five ultis. Briarcliff might mm -hmm. have one, might have two, and the weapons should be even by that point. That op, though, nothing even about that one. Sushi going to go down nice and early, and now Briarcliff can play with that man advantage. Yeah, that was a shot and a half from Hariri. And the instant be reposition caught out by Ems, but you don't want to peek into that operator, Ems. Hariri with the second of the round now for tapping towards the other side of this b site gonna try and be moving down lane here t dumps is gonna catch him for tapping there's too much of an opening in that smoke briarcliff really stepping up when it comes down to it three picks early on not even dropping damage on their team really oh seth gonna find that gun and raceway gonna go for the neural theft too now he's gonna have to try to avoid this cage though or rather get through the cage 12 bullets just has still has that guardian I don't know if he ended up putting that Vandal down or he hot swapped. He's gonna go back to the rifle, gonna swing, find one more. Five HP though, getting pinched. Hariri gonna be good for oh. the third. Seth good for three though. Still only five HP though, and he's gotta find this plant. So he still has an uphill battle. By, and that is an understatement to say that turret could be the one to take him out, but it will be Hariri on that 4K. Once again, the Saints, you're at least taking a couple rifles away and you're gonna get closer to those ultimates. But if you keep feeding kills to Briarcliff, they're gonna keep this eco even.
Yeah, I mean, you look at Hariri, even with keeping this AWP, he can just continually buy up for yeah. his teammates. Yeah, they don't have too much cash, but 7k is like two rifles for yeah, your team. Split, essentially split that four ways when you don't die. Yeah, pretty well. You can just grab whatever the team desires, pretty much. And now you're only four rounds down. Ah, the good old five stinger stack. <laughs> haven't seen it Haven't seen it yet today. It's uh, It's been a minute. Like you talked about, the stinger's seen some changes, Whoa. but the Saints still seem pretty confident oh, in its use case here. Couple spotted out. Hariri, quick pick from that op, and this eco not going the way of the Saints. Four tapping finds a trade back. Might be sprayed I down mean... through there. It's Smysek. Now 3v3. Should be able to recover some rifles here as well. Cosmic Divide comes through. That's going to be from the Saints there. And it's four tapping to put down that plant. Yeah, the Saints, if they're not going to win this round, they're going to make this one damn expensive is considering they use that five stinger stack. Finally, go mid. Countered Cosmic Divide the other way. Now Golden going to set one up on his own Caillou. Just playing shoulder to shoulder. Other side of that divide. The Astro Wells getting pulled. The stars getting distributed as well. T Dump's going to find the kill on the Caillou. This site going to be in Briarcliff's control. Control. Are the Saints going to be able to find that backside lurk in time? M's coming through art here. The diffuse is going to get started. The aftershock is going to go through to stop that plant. But the diffuse, rather, the kill is going to be good. M's found one. Four tapping on that crossfire. And M's is going to get to work with him. The two of those members going to pick up that round. They're going to clean up Briarcliff. They're going to take Pearl 13 to 8. And they're going to move on in Seaval. Almost exactly as you predicted there, Jobin. You make it to that 12 8, 12 9 scoreline. The Saints have stacked up the ultimates. They drop all of them down there just play that post plant perfectly 2-0 here yeah. on round of 32 in Seaval moving forward tomorrow they're going to be facing the winner of TMU Blue and Conestoga yeah. there that game's going on as we speak here so keep make sure you keep updated on those social medias yeah. we're going to have all the updates there for you on these future games but if you're just looking to tune into the broadcast it's going to be same time tomorrow 4 p.m start here that's going to be that round of 16 for seaval north north, north. just north yeah, yeah we're in north yeah even though the, the divisions the seating it's yeah, yeah it's, it's all kind of finicky but, but yeah we're in the seaval north bracket but i think i've saw i think overall a pretty good day mm. it's good to get challenged in the these early round games as well you don't want to see like yeah. while it feels good and it's it, obviously if you're playing at your best level and you're 13 to a team you, there's nothing bad to take away from that yeah. but it's nice to get challenged for another team to go on that run especially a team that with all expectations being considered you expect to beat this team you expected to beat them 2-0 especially given the seating i mean this is a team a lot of these outlets see val hub are talking about us northwood and one or two other teams mm -hmm. being in that final four being those last teams hanging around so this is that first stepping stone it's good to you know kind of get your hands dirty you have to go through that dog fight it's not exactly. going to always come easy to you but they end up taking a cent on their opponent's map pick they play pearl they look like they know how to play it pretty well excited to see what this team has in store yeah, surprise we never even made it to Icebox with all the resistance yeah. that was being given from Briarcliff there, but they just couldn't crack that 10 marker yeah. there. They couldn't get it really to that overtime contestion, and it just comes from smart economy from the yeah. Saints just playing for those future rounds once you have such a huge lead. But that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, not so swift 2-0 from the Saints. Not but as long as yesterday. Most most maps starting very, very solid for them. Yeah, the Saints went on that 7-8 to 1 run. And then, yeah, that second half of that game, that's why Val's so interesting. Teams like to go on these crazy high runs. I've seen games that are 10 nothing to like 10-10 or 8-1 mm -hmm. end up being 10-8 the other way. So this this tournament, C Val in general, has produced some of the best collegiate Valor. And it's only been around for a few months. So the longer this tournament goes, we're going to have more classic games, more oh, classic yeah. moments. It only is going to get better from here on out. But it is Saturday. We do not want to keep anyone around longer than expected shout out to all the people backstage again seven or eight people working behind the scenes now very very large team a lot of moving parts everything seemingly coming together now seems to be working day by yep. day getting closer and closer but shout out to everyone behind the scenes that being said saints take their first eval game two nothing they move on to tomorrow to play the winner of tmu blue or conestoga go enjoy your saturday take care of yourself and have a good one